So this will be around how do we take data governance from reactive to proactive. We've broken this down into four different themes. We will look at each theme and then come back and go back again to a demo. So let's start with the first one, which is how do we do root cause analysis, impact analysis, and how do we embed documentation closer to the left? You should be able to see the Atlin workspace. So first, across the data state, how do you get first all the metadata signals, tags, metadata API, everything that we talked about, how do we get this? So DIY, we have these, we have metadata marketplace. You can click some of this, no code, get your credentials, test some, get your network credentials right, test some authentication. And we will bring all the metadata from all of the data state to create the data inventory. So whether this is whether this is Snowflake, this is Fivetran or DBT, in case you use DBT Core or DBT Cloud, we support both of them and we bring those metadata in. Now, as soon as you get that up and running, what you get is a data inventory. Now today, for the focus of this demo, we are not gonna focus a lot on discovery. We are focused a lot on governance. So let's go into maybe one of my favorite tables. I'm just gonna search sales. It looks like there is a business term, there is a relational table. So let me just filter it via some of the most popular assets. So I just find the right relevant assets. I found the fact sales. I'm just gonna open that up. For folks who are new to the Atlin workspace, what you see right now is an, what we call an asset 360. This is a fact, fact sales table in a schema in Snowflake. Uh, you can imagine this, this is just like your LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile has everything about you, your lineage, where do you work, what has been the work, what are skills, all of those. Similarly, this asset profile has everything about this asset. It has a quick summary, who the owners are, data dictionary, if customers, if data teams have enabled, sample data, it has sample data, readmes, all of those are available. And uh, your favorite companion sidebar, which is rich metadata, which we'll come back to it in the data part of the demo. But for now, let's jump to lineage. All of us had this diagram, which source moves data to pipeline. All of this had this block diagram. And one thing we were always curious about Atlin, in Atlin is how do we truly represent this data state? Can we make it real? So I'm gonna just expand. What do you see right now is fact out this table. There are two downstream uh, Sigma, uh, Sigma dashboards that are linked to it, that are upstream some table. Let's, let's start expanding upstream. Looks like this table, it's materialized by a DBT model, which moves into fact sales. This is coming from four different tables. Let's keep expanding. Let's keep going upstream. It comes from the customer's table. This comes from the relational table. So if I'm going to zoom out, this is the diagram that all of us started with, which is you have your relational OLTP, you have five brand. This is the five brand URL. You can even go in, in case you want to go debug what's happening with the pipeline what's moving, what's not, op you want to optimize it, you can easily go into that. This is moving into your warehouse. Similarly, creating a new table, which is more of a staging table. And then you have a dimension table, which then DBT model takes over. These are the queries that run, it materializes this into a fact order table. And not only creating the end-to-end -end lineage relationship, you also get to see operational metadata. If you're running DBT cloud, what is the last success rate? How much time it took to run this? And in case you're more curious, you want to look at what's happening in DBT, want to optimize it, you can easily open the. So we do an easy handover to whatever the data state is. Now let's take a let's take one of the use cases. Let's talk about somebody wants to change some column name or something in this model, which is dim customers. And we were talking about like the theme of today's demo about how do we move governance to the left. So we'll go to where the code resides, which is GitHub. We have just one sample PR that is open here. It looks like this analytics engineer is looking to make some change. And thanks to integration between GitHub Actions and Atlin, this analytics engineer is able to see all the downstream impact across the data real estate if, this, if they make this change. Across the Snowflake table, across the uh, other Snowflake tables that exist. Now, how is this possible? We have, you can go to today to the GitHub marketplace. You have the Atlin DBT action available. You can set this up. Uh, 
And if there are any changes, thanks to the whole lineage of metadata that exist here, we're able to bring that governance right to GitHub closest to code. Not only that, right? Let's take one step forward. As Acklin, our goal is how do we keep taking the power of governance closer to the tools that people use? And one of favorite tools for everybody is spreadsheet. So let's go to one example of Google Sheet, where we also have an Atlin integration with Google Sheets where you can just decide and download Lineage. So I'm just gonna click import Lineage because maybe I wanna share the list of tables that are going to get impacted. I wanna share it with the team as a list. So let me just close this. Let me find the same table that we are searching for. Let me just download this lineage. What this does is it brings all the downstream assets that will get impacted if you make a change here, right here. So what you can see is all the assets are available. You can share this with your colleagues, uh, share this as a list with any of your teammates. But what we'll do is let's send a warning that there is a new column added. And who does not like sheets? So I'm just going to copy this because all four assets are going to get impacted. Similarly, I'm going to send this warning to everybody. And again, all I need to do is go back to this Atlin extension again and say, push to Atlin. You will soon hopefully see a green, big green check that will ensure that your metadata is synced. So right from impact analysis, making collaborator, love the power of sheets, sync the better data back to Atlin. Now, when you go back to the same lineage table, if you'll start seeing these announcements, red check mark, which means that there's something wrong with these tables. So you will start seeing uh, announcements, any warnings that have existed in these tables or somebody has marked in this lineage graph. Now, let's talk about the second part of this, of how do you embed, how do you bring documentation closer to the left? We looked at lineage, we looked at impact analysis. Now let's talk about documentation. Uh, so Colin already talked about this. If you're using DBT, you can start documenting metadata. Like, so if you see a big, big green tick, this is our version of the Twitter blue tick, which recognizes that this is this asset is verified. You can start verifying these assets, put owners right when the model is getting materialized. You don't need to wait on Atlin. So what right when the asset is getting created, these documentation will get pushed to Atlin. Okay, so let's let's go back. Let's go back to where we started. So we talked about impact analysis, embedded documentation. Let's go to the second part of the demo, which is access control via tags. We believe at Atlin believe that tags is going to be one of the most important metadata in the data estate. We we heard from everybody here, right from Five Trans roadmap to bringing tags as the data gets replicated. Snowflake has invested heavily on data tagging. Paul was talking about deep access control, masking everything is built in. So let's let's go to that demo. So we are gonna start with Snowflake. If you see, we have just set up the Snowflake environment where we've created a confidential tag with some allowed values. We've added these tags to three assets in the Salesforce schema. And just for verification, we can see that these assets have been attached with this tag. Now, with the recent upgrade integration that we built with Snowflake, what we've done is we brought the we brought in classifications tagged that on Snowflake into Atlin. So I've moved into the governance section of Atlin. You can see a list of classifications and tags that are available there. But if you see in confidential, there is a unique thing here, which is it says it's synced from Snowflake. If I click there, I can look at the same three assets that are tagged on Snowflake. So you don't need to tag them on Atlin as long as they are getting produced, tagged. You, this tagging curation is available to all data consumers. You can look at what, what is happening. You can enable, disable them, and you can manage them. Now, let's take one step forward. Let's go back to the same, same lineage graph. If you go back to the same lineage graph, and let's look at maybe column level lineage. So we, I'm sure this is a customer table, so there must be some PI around customer name. Now, as soon as one, we click that one, it gives end-to-end -end visibility at column level lineage. 
But one thing that we do unique at Atlan, if you see customer name, it's tagged as PII. But if I look at the downstream customer name, it says PII, which has been propagated via customer name. Why are the lineage relationship? We move the move, we pro help propagate these tags right from your left to the right. What that means is if I'm looking at fax sales, we've also, what we've done is we've also set up a masking policy on Snowflake. So what we have done is if there's an asset which has been marked as PII, let's mask that data. So let's see that example, how that works. So I'm just clicking fax sales again. I see a number of rows. Let's see a quick preview. We will find that customer, customer ID column. This should ideally be masked. So this means I can quickly copy this, download this, share this as analyst or scientist without worrying about my PII. Okay, so let's go back to this. So we looked at impact analysis, we looked at access control via tags. Now let's talk about proactive collaboration and extensibility. So let's go back to maybe the same table. Let's find the, find the name column. If I open this up, this opens up the companion sidebar, which has rich metadata across from your data state. It has popularity when these columns was getting used. Uh, DBT operational metadata. We have out of the box profiling, which is uh, your statistics, basic statistics that might be relevant, adds more trust to the system. And what I see is also Slack in Teams. So maybe let's take an example of quick around Teams. So if you have your favorite communication tools, we create proactive collaboration on top of it. So for the sake of demo, I'm just going to remove a full stop. Uh, I'm sure data consumers will hate me for this, but I'm just going to remove a full stop to this and go back to the Microsoft Teams. And if you have channels built in, you will have direct proactive monitoring updates on any metadata change. You can Folks can subscribe to specific metadata changes that they're looking for. So that's around proactive monitoring. But what about you don't like this flow and you want to extend this, build your own tooling workflows around this. Atlin is the only metadata platform that's available natively with AWS Cloud. So we directly integrate with EventBridge where you can capture all the metadata change events and build your own production grade workflows, hooks uh, with any metadata change events. And what this means, go to your favorite AWS console, find partner events. You will see the big Atlin logo. You can set this up. There's rich documentation, or you can reach out to your nearest customer success uh, person from Atlin. We'll be happy to help you get this set up. Now let's let's end this with maybe a 30,000 view of the whole data state. I think I saw somebody talking about GDPR as well uh, on the chat. What we've also done is for proactive monitoring and reporting, we've set up these dashboards, which gives 30,000 view of across the data states. What are the assets? How they're distributed? What's the tag distribution? What's the asset enrichment looks like? Who are the owners? And we recently started rolling out users and cost dashboards as well, looking at all the popularity data. Which are the popular assets? You can, we are giving nudges for folks to review assets. We've started seeing, in fact, a lot of data teams started to clean up their data real estate. Where, and in fact, a lot of them are going complete Marie Kondo on this, where they're removing, cleaning, and deprecating assets to reduce their data exposure and save cost in some scenarios. So impact analysis, access control via tags, collaboration extensibility, and proactive reporting.